big update in today's rapid video, we'll be going over the American Diabetes Association's new Standards of Care in Diabetes latest edition published December 2024. Now this is a big guideline, lots of changes and recommendation updates, so we'll just hit some of the highlights for this one, starting with continuous glucose monitoring. So CGM is recommended for all individuals with type 2 diabetes on insulin therapy, but should also be considered for adults with type 2 diabetes that are on glucose lowering agents other than insulin. Now, pharmacological approaches to glycemic treatment have been updated with lots more clear guidance and recommendations given for adults with type 2 diabetes who either have established or are at high risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, heart failure, or chronic kidney disease. Now, these recommendations for the use of GLP-1 receptor agonists in particular have been very well established for lots of patients with type 2 diabetes and other co-occurring comorbidities like symptomatic heart failure, preserved ejection fraction, obesity, and what's now called metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, previously known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, as well as the metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis, MASH, previously called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. So lots of recommendations for GLP-1. We also saw some new recommendations in terms of diabetic patients and their sexual health. So for men, the importance of evaluating for and conducting screening for serum total testosterone levels if symptoms or signs of hypogonadism are present and emphasize the importance of evaluating for female dysfunction as well, starting with their general well-being, but also looking at things like depression, anxiety, and recurrent UTIs, as well as genital urinary syndrome of menopause. Now, artificial sweeteners and mental health did get some recommendation updates as well, emphasizing that choosing water over beverages sweetened with either a non-nutritive or nutritive sweetener is suggested. And for mental health, making sure that you're looking at specific psychosocial concerns for individuals with diabetes, including diabetes distress, depression, anxiety, fear of hypoglycemia, and disordered eating behaviors. And for marijuana, we did see a new updated recommendation against the use of, rec of recreational marijuana for individuals with type 1 diabetes. And then also we saw some lifestyle changes, recommendations, and suggestions, with one of the important ones being emphasizing the sleep health as an important risk factor for developing type 2 diabetes and emphasize its role in managing this so for prediabetes to position it as a consideration alongside other lifestyle changes like physical activity and dietary changes. So lots of big updates from this guideline. Make sure to check out this new one.